Usually we see early on, if the Jarvan gets ahead, he tends to go for a Dust Blade, but then he goes for more of a tanky build. Something mm -hmm. like, uh, I don't know, there's a couple ways you do Black Cleaver, you could even go Sterix, but looks like he's just going all in on his lethalities. After the Yumus is going for most likely a Serpent's Fang or something here, maybe? Uh, I think that's Serpent's Fang. Yeah, I, I don't know which one builds a pickaxe. Say I'm a support player. So. It's something. It's something. I don't know what lethality item is going to be, but it's going to be maybe it's even Axiom Mark or something. Possibly, I have no Axiom clue. Mark on Jarvan could be cool because having that ult up. I mean, if you're resetting that ult fully yeah. at some point, that's huge. I mean, two right. ults especially against out this like low mobility ball lane. If you can ult the Ash yeah. and then get it back to ult the Gwen. Oh, that's going to be an ult coming out onto one. Jarvan going to go down very very fast. So this is going to be Glacial Pop. Ricky going to find one as well. This fight is turning. Completely in St. Clair's favor so far. Set out going to come down. A double kill for Barlow, though. Will slow up the set. He's not going to go anywhere. That's going to be a shutdown onto Zephyrod here, but it's going to cost the entire team. Alt going to land there. That's Long range. Hit. Barlow finding it. That's going to be the end for this Jinx. Potipus going to go down an ace no again way. for St. Clair. Wow. I mean, just from the moment that started, St. Clair was ready to flip that fight. I mean, we saw the immediate reaction come out. As soon as the Jarvan all came out, we're seeing uh, Zephyrok go in. We're seeing Ricky go in, trying to hit those stuns, those big stuns. And that Zeph Zephyrok ult that he popped right before he died was, like, massive, I think. <laughs> I saw about two people get knocked crazy. up. It was a confusing pretty sure there, Yeah, I'm pretty sure there was a third person that was hit off screen. Um, but then he, he was traded out there, but yeah. Yeah, in the end, it's still an ace for St. Clair. Only one down. Jinx did pick up another shutdown, so we'll be able to get even further ahead. But, I mean, for me, I see the problem right now for Grandview is the fact that this Jarvan, yes, he did pick up the Serpent's Fang, but he's full lethality. So as soon as he commits to that EQ ult, instantly dead. So if he's not trading out in that second for whoever he's going in on, he's basically just giving up all agency in the fight, and he's committing when he's going to end up going down anyway. And now that we see... Um, a Guardian Angel built for this Ash, and the Zhonya is completed for the Gwen. Uh, it's going to be very, very tough. We even see a Serpent or a Shadow Flame for the Gwen as well. So a lot of items being built here. These teams getting to around full build are at 60k income. Um, at this point, it's really going to come down to who can execute fights better. Yeah, we're also seeing Nautilus built that Knight's Vow. Uh, Knight's Vow actually got reverted to its old effect, which is now it essentially heals you. Uh, back again for some of the damage the your ADC deals or whoever is your link mm -hmm. to deals. Um, presumably your ADC. Yeah. Well, um, right now in this game, I hope it's <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I hope it's the ADC. Um, but you're also keeping the damage reduction. So any damage or 30% or 40% of your damage that your ADC takes um, will actually get transferred to the Nautilus there. And we're going to see a huge Annie ult coming out, able to pop the GA on Barlow. E-Hug going in there, gonna have to flash out. Eric Zhang gonna be taken down. Ricky coming in, three-man Q there. A lot of damage coming out. Nautilus very low. Platypus, oh, just able to Gale Force away. Is Ricky gonna be able to make it out? He's gonna go down. Oh. Rush is gonna go down. Sephiroth not able to finish off the Annie. And that is gonna go over to Grandview. Uh, only losing one player there. Wow. The problem too now is that the Baron is up. The dragon is up, so not only did you lose the fight, not only did you give even more gold and another shot down over to this Jinx on that triple kill, you're losing the Baron, and you're losing the dragon as well. It isn't Soul, they will still have another chance to fight for that, but uh, after all those fights going in St. Clair's favor, I'm very surprised to see this one go to GPU. I think, obviously, the fact that Barlow got cut out there was huge, and um, they didn't really come to his defense fast enough. I, we saw E-Hug go in there initially on the back line, but just got zoned off by the Annie, and then... Uh, Fresh died almost instantly as soon as Jinx threw a couple autos yes. he went down. So uh, I think really well played there by GVU. Spaced out the fight quite well. And that's really what allowed them to uh, take this gold advantage back almost in their favor. Yeah, three flashes burned by uh, St. Clair in that fight as well. They're not going to be in the greatest spot coming into these upcoming team oh. fights. Oh, wow. That was almost, almost it. They are going to be able to get out here. Oh, the Ash ult is going to hit the Jinx. They don't want to commit for this, though. Baron is up still, so they don't want to force this play. Oh, maybe they do. Yug is going to walk back, and he used the ult no already. Play there. Zephyrok, Zephyrok coming in. He is going to hit the ult. E-Hug going to go in deeper. Damage coming out. The Sopwatch also going to come out. Ooh, Jinx ult able to pick him up as he comes out of that Zonia's. 
Barlow doing a lot of damage here as Zephyrod is going to be fighting the set, able to pick it up. And that is going to be th uh, three for uh, two for three for St. Clair. Three for two? Yeah, three for two there for St. Clair. They do have their ADC and mid laner still alive, which means they can force into this mid. Baron is still up for the two members alive for the side of GDU, just the Starvin and the Annie. So definitely still a way to defend the space. But they want to go in on this Jarvan, who is very and squishy, but Annie lands in. a stun. This could be bad though. Eric Yang gonna go down here on this Jarvan again. A lot of autos coming out here from Barlow. They can try and take this turret down. No one up for the side of GVU anytime soon, but Annie will get shut down, and that's gonna be it. Barlow can they take down the turret? Yeah, they Thank will. So that's gonna be the end of the game. St. Clair pull it out of the hat. They end up winning this one. A pretty crazy one. We didn't really get to see a ton of it, but in the end, St. Clair take the victory and bring us to game number two in the lead up 1-0. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, like you said, not much I can really say about that yeah. game considering <laughs> we only caught short glimpses of it. However, it was a good what I do, what I what I believe happened was I want to say that Grandview kind of weren't able to capitalize enough on their early game, and then Saint Clair just has those three big hitters from the jungle mid and ADC, and the damage was just too high for them, honestly. Yeah, I, I think they spaced out fights pretty well. If they could get on top of the Jinx and kill her early, they completely turned the fights around because yeah. Jinx was the only one really providing any damage. And he was doing a decent amount of burst, but she required a lot of peel. So if you didn't have the Nautilus on top of her, she really just got taken out early in those fights. And I mean, to be honest, Gold was even at the end of that game. Yeah. Like, even at that really. dragon and that dragon fight, Gold was literally even for both teams. So it was just St. Clair with a better execution in those fights. And I really, for me... I didn't like the Jarvan AD, uh, Jarvan AD pick. Like, I think the Jarvan itself was a fine pick, but the fact yeah. that he fully committed onto lethality is just not something you're able to do on this Jarvan when you get later on in the game because as soon as you commit into those fights, you're just down just instantly, dead. and there's so many yeah. defensive tools with the Lulu and with the Renekton that you can keep people off of your back line. Uh, he just goes down in a fight, and he's pretty much worthless. Yeah, definitely. I, yeah, I think... I want to say they didn't need the tankiness because they definitely did have a, have a very tanky team with that set and the Nautilus. But at the same time, you're yeah, you are really losing that late game pressure that the Jarvan has because he he does just get blown up as soon as he goes in. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna take it to a quick break here. Game number two will start up in just a moment. Don't go anywhere. Saints up one zero, looking to secure their spot in the semifinals here in NCC playoffs.